There we go. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning to the room. Good morning to all of you. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Let me see if I can invite some people in here. I don't know how to really do this, but let's see. Good morning to you. Come on in. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning. Good morning to you, Sister Angela. Let me see. How do I invite people? You think I would not have to do this by now? But I don't. Good morning to all of you. Sister Kelly, good morning. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Donna. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Terry. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. Sister Nimby, good morning to you. I was trying to invite you, but I see that you are in. God bless you. Thank you for joining this broadcast on this morning. We're going to get right into prayer and then into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you for the people of God that have come to this broadcast to hear a word from you, O oh God. And Lord, we praise you, Lord, because you are, God, magnificent. You are marvelous, Lord. God, and we thank you for this word that will go forth, God, with power, that will go forth, Lord, with might, God, and we thank you, God, for how you're going to take it, Lord, and allow us to use it, God, for our very lives. But Lord, I pray right now that I will decrease in myself and increase in you, the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives me, as always, the ability to do things well. And for that, God, I just give you praise, and I honor you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, just um, for all the things that you've done for what, God, I know that you will continue to do in my life and all of our lives, God. We thank you, God, for healing, for restoration, Lord God. We thank you for direction. We thank you for guidance. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done just for our life, God, for our healing. We thank you, Lord, for keeping our children, oh God. God, and even when we went to sleep last night, Lord, you didn't allow the enemy to disturb our rest. But I thank you, Lord, that we had a sweet peace and sweet rest on last night. Thank you for waking us up this morning to these brand new mercies. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you, Brother Dennis. I love you too. Good morning. Good morning, Deacon Mary. Good morning to all of you. Brother Glenn, good morning. Thank you so much for joining this broadcast. Sister Courtney, good morning to you. Tressa, good morning. Good morning to all of you this morning. We're talking about beware of the chameleon. You know what I was going to talk about as we were in our warfare and I was still warring. Um, we were talking about um, warfare and I was going to, dis to discuss, um, I was going to discuss about the uniform that I had on and how it was um, um, a uniform that everybody wore. It was all the same, and it was a uniform, and it let us know that we were a part of the army of the Lord. But then as I began to, 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 to wrestle and, and research and talk about this uniform that all of us wore, to let everybody know who we were in the body of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord began to lead me and shift me from the uniform that we were fighting in the army. Good morning to you, Sister Camelia. Um, in the army, Sister Roz, good morning. Thank you for joining. Um, he began to shift me from the uniform that all of us as Christians are to wear to something, my God, that we are not supposed to wear. And as a matter of fact, we shift, we change colors, we change personalities, we change behaviors, and we change attitudes. And he began to share with me is that there are some in the body of Christ, there are some that are walking around looking at you that are chameleons. They are, these are those that change with the different situations, change with circumstances. And I got on, good morning to you, Bishop Jones. Thank you so much for joining this word this morning. As we're talking about, beware of the chameleon. That is an animal. It's a lizard. It's kind of slimy. And um, the lizard, it, it has a long tongue. Sometimes it says a lizard's tongue as long as its own body. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But the lizard has a long tongue and it, it changes colors. It dwells in trees. It has long, thin legs and a, a strong, curled tail. But the thing about it is it has the ability to change. Is ability to change colors. And what is it doing? What um, It's native to Africa, native to Madagascar. 
but it has the ability to change colors based on the environment that it is in. Come on, Holy Spirit. And sometimes even we, as a people of God, we change colors. We change our attitudes, our personalities based on the very environment that we are in. We tend to blend in with our surroundings. We tend to blend in with situations. This is a great meditation for many this morning. And then as I begin to, to research and study this out, I begin to think about not only those of us who are walking around with our friends, our families, but those of us who are in our churches. We've been given um, as a gift to the church by God. But yet there are some times when we allow the enemy to come in and he will taint the gift that God has given to us. And so instead of us walking around in the liberty that the Lord has given to us, we change colors. Sometimes, you know, we come to church on Sunday and we all dressed up and, you know, we have our Bible, we have our 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 mobile device that has the word of the Lord on it. Good morning to you, Dr. Evelyn. And we come, we are all fancy and, and we're doing real good. But then as soon as the service is over, come on, as soon as the service is over, we're doing something different. Good morning, Brother Emmy. We're doing something different. We, I'm talking about beware of the chameleon, but are we ourselves those chameleons? Are we ourselves those who will change colors, who will change based on the environments that we are in? 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, we know verse number 17. It says, if any man is in Christ, Sherilyn, good morning to you. He is a new creature. Old things passed away. Bishop Holiday, good morning. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. We have to be mighty careful of just uh, reacting to the surroundings that we are in. Listen, the Bible says, even in Romans, that I beseech you, therefore, by the mercy of, of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. But be not conformed to the world. Be not changed to the things of the world. Come on, be not moved by what's going on in the world. We got to make sure that we are transformed to what the word of the Lord is saying by the renewing of our minds. Our minds have got to be changed. Our minds have got to be renewed. There's got to be something different about us that makes us, my God, not want to go back to the things that we have gone back before, to before. We talk about this lizard, this, this chameleon. Now, when you know, we can talk about, you know, we put spiritual on top of anything. But this chameleon that I'm talking about is a person who pretends to be something that they are not. And at some point, we got to look at that situation. Yes, we got to look at the situation and we got to say, what color are you wearing today? It's a person who presents an image of something that they think you want to see. Good morning to you, Sister Tanya. They present an image of something that you want to see. And where do we find them? We find them everywhere. We find them everywhere. And at some point, sometimes maybe you yourself, you present an image to somebody else of what you think they want to see whether the, rather than what is really going on inside of you. How many of you, come on, how many of you when someone walks to you and they say, hey, how are you doing? Good morning to you, Sister Lucretia. They say, how are you doing? And, and in spite of all that's going on inside of you, in spite that it's happening in your lives, in spite of, I'm telling you, the situations that have, have just happened, what do you say? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm doing so good. Instead of you saying to them, you know what? I'm doing okay. But the devil show is messing. This is the situation going on in my family that I need some prayer for. Sometimes we pretend that everything is going well and we miss out on the opportunity for somebody to pray for us. You know, there was a game show, I don't remember what it was called, but will the real Christians please stand up? Will the real saint of God please stand up? Will the one who is truly looking for the Lord to will you real, will you just stand up? Because in order for us to maintain our effectiveness in this world, in order for us to maintain our effectiveness in the body of Christ, in order for us to maintain our effecti effectiveness in our homes, among our children, among our co-workers, among those we go to church with, we have got to maintain some integrity. We got to maintain integrity in our relationships with other people. We got to maintain some integrity if, in our relationship with Christ. Come on, somebody just got to be honest. Come on, come on, you ask me, how am I doing? Listen, to be honest, Brother Dennis, to be honest, there's some mess going on. 
But you know what? If you stand with me in prayer, because the Bible says where there are two or three together, touching and agreeing on anything, the Lord says, I am in the midst of you. If you would just stand with me in prayer, I know this thing that's trying to overtake me will not overtake me. We've got to stop pretending, people of God. we got to stop pretending and stop blending in with the situations and the circumstances that are that are presenting themselves to us. Good morning to you, Sister Aretha. Listen, when my husband and I counsel, and we counsel a lot on marriages, we counsel a lot in relationships, and I'm not talking about nobody, yes, but we're, we counsel, and sometimes when we counsel uh, in regard to marriage, we come to them and we say to you, we say, we're not counseling you for marriage. We're counseling to see if marriage is what is for you. And then we want to make sure that we ensure a successful marriage as possible. And how do you do that? We know that the Bible says you should not be unequally yoked because when you're unequally yoked, maybe this is turning into a relationship message, but when you're unequally yoked, come on, there's some destruction that's, that's going to be at your door. And so we try to ensure as much as we possibly can, Bishop, that th both parties are saved. This because we are doing spiritual counseling. So the counsel that we're giving in regard to marriage is going to be counsel that's going to be found in the word of God. And so we ask the question, are both of you saved? Usually, you know, the wife will come and she'll ask for the counseling and we'll say, is your, you know, spouse to be, is this person saved? And sometimes they'll give, you know, they'll give um, this comment. Sometimes they will say, he's saved, but he just don't go to church. Or they'll say, he's not saved yet, but because I'm saved, the Bible says, what does the Bible say? It says the, 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 the saved wife will be able to draw in her unsaved husband. But right now, says Lucretia, we're not talking about husband and wife. Right now, we're just talking about boyfriend and girlfriend. Because if we're doing spiritual counseling, we understand that the carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. Y'all follow me this morning? And so when you talk Bible to someone who doesn't know the Lord, to someone who's not following the Lord, to somebody that's not trying to get where the Lord is, it's going to be just like you talking French, ink, Spanish, or, or Japanese to them because they just simply will not understand it. And when you give an instruction from the Lord, the instruction is going to show them how their marriage is going to be blessed and how their family is going to be blessed and how their household is going to be blessed. It just isn't going to penetrate their spirits if they are not a part of the body of Christ. Now, certainly sometimes through um, evangelism, you know, we can plant the seed of salvation. Someone can water the seed of salvation, and, but God is himself, he's going to give the increase. But it's going to be very, very difficult, Brother Glenn, if I plant the seed of salvation in the person that you are trying to get with and trying to marry, but yet you are sleeping with them. Come on, you're sleeping with them. You're in an intimate relationship with them. You're doing things that are not conducive to the, to the, to the plan of God for your life at that moment because I said you're not married yet. And so you're showing them a different way. How are you going to save, get somebody saved, help someone to be saved while you're in the face of them showing them something different? Come on, you're sleeping with them. Come on. But you're still saying to them, come on, we need to be saved. You're saying to them, you need to follow the, the principles and the guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ when we are right in front of them showing them something different. It's going to be different, if difficult for you as the spouse, as the woman, as the other, as the man, come on, to help to water that seed of salvation when you yourselves are living in sin. But yet we go to church and we change our colors. We shout hallelujah. We sing glory to God. We're chameleons. And then the one that we want to be a part of, then they say to us, girl, you know I love God. <laughs> you know I love God. But yet they show you something different. They themselves are chameleons. You got to beware of the chameleon. Because what happens when you're in fellowship with a chameleon, come on, it steals time from you. It steals time from you. Because now you're showing, you're telling me that you are this one person. But yet when I leave somewhere and I go somewhere else with you, you show me something completely different. So what do you take away from? You take away from the time that I should be in prayer because I'm spending time with you. 
Come on, I'm I'm spending time on you because I've I've bought into this disguise that you have on. I bought into it because now you're you're telling me a thing, and now my feelings are all wrapped up and tied up in it. And so it's difficult for me now to come on to pull away. It's difficult for me now to even have a clear vision of really what's going on in my life. Come on, chameleons, they, they, they steal time for you that you should be spending with God because now you are open to whatever it is that they have because of the relationship that you've gotten into. There are those, my God, who are chameleons, and, and I, I hate to say it, bishops, but there are some that are chameleons in leadership. Oh, my God, they, they, they want to be the leader. But they begin to start caring more about, more about being a leader than caring about those who they lead. They begin to want to start you know, manip manipulating those who they are supposed to be leaders of. And I'm telling you, it could be anybody. It could be a pastor. It could be a teacher. It could be an evangelist. It could be anybody that has gifts and abilities that God has given to them. But you got to beware of the chameleon. Come on, there's a spirit of the Lord that lives and dwells inside of every one of us. And God has given, the Lord has given us a gift of discernment that we might be able to see who the real Christian is, who the real leader is. Come on, is their heart for the heart of the people of God? Is their heart for the heart, heart of the people of God, that the, the people of God may be able, my God, to do the things that they need to do? You know, there are those, come on, there are those, you know them. They come to church just for a certain purpose. They come to church. Maybe they come so they can find a mate because they feel like, come on, at least if they find a mate in the church, come on, they're, 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 doing, they're doing pretty good rather than finding one in the street. And so their main purpose is to find someone when they walk into the church. You got to beware of people like that. Because our main focus for coming to the house of God is that we find Jesus, is we find the Lord, my God, is that we find him. But what happens is sometimes the chameleons, they use colors or they use the disguise of a relationship with Jesus Christ to manipulate you as the believer who's in church who says, oh, he's a great, he's a good person. You know, now he's on the, on the usher board and he's greeting everyone that comes in. He's, he's showing those pearly whites. Come on, just to manipulate the, ah, why are you talking about this this morning, Pastor Tina? Because there are many of us who are tricked, we're duped by those who are chameleons and we've got to be able to understand who the real people of God are. There are things the Bible tells us in the word of the Lord that we've got to flee all appearances of evil. And even though sometimes we may not understand it, we may not see it, there are things that are working against you, working against you to keep you from get, walking in the plan that God has for you. But there is a chameleon, come on, that's out there. It's a romantic chameleon. Come on, he's trying to use his charm, her charm, to lead you away from the Lord because his motive is that you be with him or she be with or you, her. You all understand what I'm saying? So you have got to be able to discern the real thing because not only does it take your time, it takes you away from doing what the Lord would have for you to do. It moves you out of the purpose that God has for you as well. It tricks you into thinking that they are the one that should be for you. And all the time, it's a mirage that's been set in your path. Come on, sometimes even those mirages, I didn't mean to talk about relationships today, but sometimes even those mirages that are in your path, come on, those keep you from getting to the place that God really has for you. You know, the Lord is not going to bust down any doors. He said that. And if you start putting people in the place where the Lord has your, your person, your man, your woman for you, Come on, he's not going to bust down that door. He's not going to do that. So if you continue to look at these mirages as if they were real and allow these people, come on, to continue to trick and manipulate you, when the Lord is saying, I got this one over here. He's standing over here. He's waiting for you. I've created the one that I have for you. But come on, many, many single women may be on this line. Many single men may be on this line. And you're wondering, where is the one that God has for me? The Bible says, so, you know, the man who finds a wife finds a good thing. And the woman is saying, okay, I, I got it, Jesus. I know I need to be found. So I'm going to present myself so that I can be found. But where is he? Is he looking for me? 
And sometimes we put other people in the way that even though the man may be looking for you, he's not going to find you because you have put somebody else in that path, somebody else in the place of the one that God has for you. Come on, and then because you put you put somebody else in the place that God has for you, that chameleon now is in your space and in your life. Come on, then that has caused this person that God has for you not to find you because of that barrier, that border that is up of the other person. Come on, you gotta know again. You gotta know who the real who the real thing is. You gotta know who the real person in Christ is. You gotta be able to discern and recognize a counterfeit from the real. Come on, you gotta know what you gotta know what a dedicated, godly Christian life is really like. And how are you gonna know that? You know that by reading your word, by being in your word of God, by you yourself not being a chameleon. You know that, come on, you don't go just come to church to let people think that you are all holy and saved and you're holier than thou. And then as soon as you walk out, come on, that cannot be your story. It cannot be your story. You have to be one, my God, that does that goes to Bible study. You have to be one that reads your word of God. And you can't be distracted by the chameleon. You can't be distracted, come on, by anything that's going to bring you, bring you down or move you from what it is that God has for you to do. There's another thing about chameleons that I wanted to bring out in the last few minutes of the time I have. So the chameleon, he does what? He changes colors. Come on, y'all going to be looking for people this, these next few days. Changes comes with the atmosphere. You know them. You know them. One day they're saying one thing and the next day they're saying another thing. One day they're on your side and the next day they're speaking against you. That's the other thing about the chameleon. The chameleon, he is filled with false accusations. I said to you earlier, the chameleon's tongue is long. It's long and it's sticky. His tongue, his tongue is like a, is a lizard. Come on, he's fork tongue. What is that? He said he's filled with false accusations. And, and when he sticks his tongue out, when he says things, he falsely accuses you. And it doesn't have to be somebody that you don't know. Come on, because I said to you, he changes colors. He changes in the, at, in the atmosphere. Could be somebody that's standing right beside you, sitting right beside you. Could be somebody in your family. Come on, in Genesis chapter 31, um, there's, there's a story about Jacob and Laban's sons. Jacob, is his, Jacob heard these words Laban's sons were saying. And Laban's sons were saying, Jacob, Jacob has taken all the wealth of that was our father's. And from what was our father's, he has acquired all of this wealth. And so as I'm talking about chameleons, those who share things and spread things, come on, that hurt, that are false accusations, that are insults against you. Come on in here. I'm going to tell you how to deal with it, though. And there are things that you would want to say. In this world of social media, come on, when somebody when somebody does something against you, y'all know it. Somebody comes at you, you come back at them. But the people of God, listen, we cannot be like the, I said, being not being uh, transformed, being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is that you bless people and not curse them. Come on, the, the, the in the Bible, it talks about the, the cousins. They were this cousins. And he was, they were speaking ill of, of him. They were accusing Jacob of doing some things, taking, confiscating the father's uh, property. And, and, and this was an exaggeration. They, they were jealous. Come on, chameleons get jealous. They get jealous over what it is that you have, jealous over the blessings that you have, jealous over what God has given to you, get jealous over the gifts that God has placed into your life. And it will happen. Things happen. But just because someone is jealous or just because someone hurls insults, just because someone you know, says something about you or against you that is not the truth, it doesn't mean come on, you go and get a gun and shoot them. It doesn't mean that you go, come on, and, and hurl insults back at them. It doesn't mean you go and get on Facebook and get at them. It don't, doesn't mean any of that at all. We have to be conformed to the things of God, not to the things of the world. So that so so that we don't change like a chameleon. So when something happens, Sister Elaine, and someone says something against you, we're not good because we've been this holy saint all this time. 
And then for some reason, because the Lord blessed you so much, somebody got angry about it and they begin to say things. That doesn't matter because what they, just because they say things doesn't mean that God's not going to continue to bless you. It doesn't mean that God does not still have his hand on you. Isn't that something how we think that when people start cursing us or people start saying things against us, for some reason, we think that means that God is going to listen to them and he's going to stop blessing us. But the Lord is not going to stop blessing you. He's not going to stop blessing you because somebody has said something about you. And so when we get on Facebook, when we get on Instagram, we get on social media, and then we start talking about someone, come on, that's just showing. And, and then, we, then we get back and we get back at them. You say, well, I've heard it. You come for mine, I'm coming for yours. Come on, when you do that, that just shows how immature we are. It shows how immature we are. But not only does that it show that, it also shows the lack of relationship we have with the Lord. It also shows, my God, how far we are from him, how far we are from being conformed to him and transformed into the image of him. So we got to make, su make sure that when someone goes public on us, we don't go public back on them. What do we do? We go to the Lord about it. I'm talking about spiritual chameleons because they'll do it. They'll try to manipulate. Come on, they'll try to move you from the purpose that God has for you. Come on, they will hurl insults at you because they want you to get back at them. They want you to do something against God. But what do you got to do? You got to dig your heels in deep. And no matter how much you feel like it's hurting you, you got to understand there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Beware of the spiritual chameleons. Beware of the chameleons. But you got to, again, you got to refuse to open your mouth. You got to refuse. Come on. We, we take on offense. You got to refuse to be offended because it isn't you that blessed yourself. Come on. It isn't you. Come on. They gave you the things that you have. It isn't you that gave you the abilities yourself. It isn't you that they're coming against. It's the God that's in you that they're coming against. And don't you know that God can handle them? He can handle everything that is going on in your life. He can handle all of it. So as we are continuing to be, to, to, to be grown up, to mature in the things of God, we've got to say, listen, God, I will trust you in all things, in all things, all things I can do through you. Revelation three, come on, says he, he doesn't want us to be hot or cold. He, he, he wants you to be hot or cold. He don't want you to be lukewarm. He don't want you to be switching back and forth. You don't want you to be changing with every environment, changing with every situation that you're, that you're in. You got to, come on, you got to be hot for the Lord. He says, if you're, if you're neither hot nor cold, he says, if you're lukewarm, he says, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I will spit you out of my mouth. He says, because lukewarmness has no place in the body of Christ. Come on, at least if you're cold, I could at least try to send somebody to plant a seed of salvation. At least if I, if, you, if I know you don't love me, I can at least send somebody. Maybe the, plants, the seeds already been planted, but I can at least send somebody to water the seed. He said, but don't vacillate back and forth. He said, don't, he said that kind of people, you're too wishy-washy. The Bible says, listen, you're unstable in all of your ways. If you're double-minded, you're just unstable. So the Lord is calling all of us. Come on. If you love God, if you love God, who said it? Mary, Mary, I love God. If you don't love God, what's wrong with you? Do you? If you love God, claim to love him. Claim to love. It is, Robin, it is exhausting when you're going back and forth. You don't know what suit to put on. You don't know, you don't know what, uh, we don't know what voice to have. You don't know what attitude to have. It's just like telling a lie. You go back and forth. You don't know which lie you're told to cover that lie, and you don't know who you told it to. It's exhausting. It's better just to be who God has called you to be and who God has created you to be. Beware of the chameleon. Beware of the chameleon. Beware of you yourself being the chameleon. Listen, don't claim to love God in one breath and then curse him and curse others in the next breath. Come on, don't claim come on, to love God and then you're doing all sorts of, of sexually impure things outside of the bonds of marriage. Don't claim to love God when you're still living a sinful and worldly lifestyle. Don't claim to love God if you don't love him. Beware of the spiritual chameleon. The Lord says, I don't, you can't have it both ways. Can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have it both ways. Beware of the spiritual chameleon. Beware of those, my God, who are chameleons in your life. Make sure they are pure. Make sure they are true. Make sure you are true.
Father God, I just bless your name. I thank you, Lord God, for this God warning, Lord God, that you help us to see, Lord God, that we have got to be steadfast, immovable, Lord God, in your work, in your ways, oh God. We have got to be, Lord God. Because if we don't, first of all, Lord God, we, we taint our witness. Lord, our witness is no good if we're vacillating back and forth. Lord God, our witness to our family members are no good. Our witness among our churches, Lord, they are no good if we are vacillating back and forth. Lord, if we are changing our colors and changing our appearance and changing our behaviors and changing our attitudes and changing the way we walk and changing the way we talk, God, based on where we are. Lord, the Bible says if, if we are a new creature in you, God, you are the one who have changed us. You've changed us. Lord, old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. We're not going back to the old, Lord. So I thank you for just helping us to see that we cannot go back to the old. We cannot go back to the old ways that we used to walk in, the old ways that we used to talk, Lord. We want victory. Lord, we thank you, God, that even though, Lord God, we know that some of us have gone back and forth. And Lord, you said you spit that out of, our, out of your mouths. Lord, we ask that you allow us to come back, Lord God. We ask that you forgive us, oh Lord God, for when we were chameleons. Forgive us, Lord God, for when we got manipulated ourselves. For, forgive us, Lord God, for when we did things that were against you. And then, Lord, I know that you, God, will receive us back into your kingdom because you are such a forgiving God. Lord, right now, God, we thank you for Dr. Evelyn's uh, sister, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you are healing her body. We thank you, Lord, but we know, God, that healing comes from you. And, Lord, the prayers of the righteous, they avail much. So, Lord, even, God, as we are asking, Lord, for prayers and thanking you, God, for healing for her, Lord, I ask for prayer, Lord, for Sister Tressa's son. Lord, you know what the situation is. Lord, you know, God, how to lead him and guide him through whatever it is that he's going through. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for holding his hand and not letting it go. Lord, even though he may try to pull his hand from you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you have him, Lord God. You have everything that is concerning him. And Lord, because of that, because of the prayers of the righteous that avail much, Lord God, whatever it is that he needs, Lord God, you will bring that thing to pass. Now bring his mother, God, peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. She's not even going to know, God, what happened and why it happened. But Lord, it was because of you, your grace, God, your mercy, Lord God, that brought us through. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord God, in the lives of those or in the places, Lord God, that the the hurricanes, Lord God, and the fires, God, have ravaged. I pray, Lord God, that you continue to restore in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God, for the first responders. Brother Glenn, we just bless God for you. Pray that the Lord will continue to heal your body. That God, when you get up out of this bed of affliction, Lord, how I thank you that you will not be the same. You will run harder. You will run faster than you ran before. You will come on. You will help and you will save more people than you helped and you saved before. Because of the rest that the Lord has given you. He has strengthened your bones. He has strengthened your body. He has strengthened your mind. And I thank you right now that you will use it all for the glory of God. We praise Lord, praise you, oh God, for all that you have done. Lord, for the people of God that listen to this broadcast. Lord, I pray right now that you give them a special blessing. Let them know, Lord God, that you are God, that you are a marvelous God, that you are a sovereign God. There is nothing, God, that happens without you, Lord God, but everything, God, happens to you and through you. We bless your name, oh Lord God, for what you're going to do for the people of God. God, miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord God, shall appear in their lives, God, because God, they have the faith to believe that you can do it. Now strengthen us right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that all these things, oh Lord God, that we have asked, God, shall come to pass, because this is a confidence that we have, that if we ask anything according to your will, Lord God, you will do it. Healing is in your will, God. Wealth is in your will, God. Prosperity is in your will, Lord God. Oh God, divine revelation, it is in your will. We're asking for it all, Lord Jesus, and I know that you will do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all the people of God said amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, it is Tuesday. It's a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. Watch out for those chameleons. Watch out for those, come on, who profess one thing and do something else. But you yourself, come on, if you've been doing that, come on, ask God to forgive you for it and just keep, come on, be who God has called for you to be. Come on, will the real Christians please stand up? Will the real people of God please stand up? Please stand up. I love you with the love of Jesus. You all go in peace.